No one can stay his hand. Amen. Now, now what, what the text that, that, I, I, I'm, I'm, that we're thinking about tonight is that he gave this kind of dominion, this kind of majesty to a man. Amen. Nebuchadnezzar had this kind of majesty to where thousands, thousands were in his court. And what did he do? He came in the room and they did whatever he said. If, if he said, you die, did anyone say, but that's not fair. You die too. You, you see, you see, you know, I already know you, brother, know this. And it's such a pleasure to talk, preach to people who know the scriptures, who know God. Amen. Amen. It, cuts, it cuts a lot of the groundwork down, doesn't it? Amen. When God created the world, not one element rose up against him in opposition. Not one element said, are you sure I belong here? <laughs> no. See, they, they were all doing what he wanted. In fact, you could almost say they were jumping for joy because God was giving them something to do in his kingdom. Amen. Not one plant or river or mountain said, are you sure we should be here? I mean, shouldn't we blow over that? I would, I would feel better. He said, that's absurd. Well, just as absurd when men do it. Amen. Amen. Just as absurd. Amen. Amen. But see, we have this, we have this strange notion that man has a right. <coughs> well, I'm here to affirm that God has a right. Amen. 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 The one that created us, the one that made us. He has a right. Amen. And I want to bow to his right. Amen. His will. Amen. His purpose. It's a good purpose. Amen. With a good end. It's a good salvation. So much so that his own son would come. The word would taste death for every man. He put himself where we belonged. And he took away our sin. And he thought it was worthy to die for. So I don't have to know all, all the ins and outs about it. I want to. But see, I don't have to know all about it. God knows all about it. And he said, do you trust me? Do you trust me? Amen. Nebuchadnezzar, he would say, go. And they went. At least they better, right? Amen. He had majesty. See, now see, majesty, that's, that's, a, that's a good thing. It's a really good thing. Oh, see, it, it was good because it derived from God, man, God's the one that gave it to him. That's what made it good. I mean, you'd be hard-pressed to find some of those people that got their heads locked up and say, that was a great guy, right? But that didn't make it any less a type. Something we can look at and something we can learn from about what God is, about who God is, about how God's attributes work. You look at Nebuchadnezzar, and they were working. He was a king that had majesty and glory and honor. Why? Because God gave it to him. Amen. That's why. Amen. See, he wasn't. You see, well, what, what Hitler and all these other people, they were saying that, well, I don't read about them in the Bible. I read about Nebuchadnezzar, and I read about God gave him something so we could look at it. He was that head of gold. Isn't that what it says? Mm -hmm. Why? Because God was showing us a picture here. You want to know how my kingdom works? I say, and it gets done. We need to know that. Amen. Amen. We need to know that. We live in a democracy, which is like the clay mixed with some iron, right? It's getting ready to fall over. I love my country. Oh, it's this thing, the Star Sprinkle Banner. And I, and I mean that. I really do. I, I, I went and served and all that. But I'm telling you right now, I don't serve my country. I serve God. Amen. Amen. That's who I serve. Amen. Amen. That's the one that's going to get me out of this. Amen. 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 Yeah. We're all in it. <laughs> now, you know, I was thinking, we don't have to wait until the earth is created. I'm thinking about, you know, from God's perspective, from God's perspective, this is, God's the one that gave Nebuchadnezzar this glory, this majesty, this fame across the whole world. So, you know, from God's perspective, we don't have to wait until the earth is created to, to, um, to find an entrance to another will. Planet Earth would not really play host to the first original sin. That was going to be 
in the heavens. It would be very, it would be found in the very courts of heaven by one who God created and yet didn't remain as God created him. Now there would be a place later when God would talk about this and reveal some about what happened inside there. It would be revealed as a wonder in heaven. How could this? Now see, from man's point of view, you're, if you could see, you would, you would wonder, God's reigning? And right under his nose, so to speak, Lucifer defects? Is this possible? It's not only possible, it happened! Amen. <clears throat> did, well, did God know? Well, if he wouldn't be God if he didn't. He, not only did he know about it, he allowed it. Amen. Why did he allow it? Because God's doing something. Amen. God's working. <laughs> He's working salvation even in these beginning times before time ever began. Amen. God's allowing something. Why? Because God's going to use this. Now see, just, just to make sure that nobody thinks that, that I'm in... Uh, Implying that God somehow created evil, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna read a couple of things because it's important that this 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 thought doesn't even enter our mind. Very important. God is holy. God doesn't create evil. Amen. Amen. Questions asked. Amen. Questions asked. How? How? Now you, you, you put yourself in Isaiah's shoes. He gets this message. This is amazing. It's, a, it's about a king that's really alive at the time, and yet it's profound. What is going to say? Well, spiritual men are going to be thinking about this until the end of the world. This is something that's going to capture. Look at what God's allowed, and look at what God does with what he allowed. Holy Spirit presents this pointed question in our minds. Our minds, as you consider it, you know how holy and how, 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 how righteous God is, and how this must have, in his very presence, uh, see, how tempted was God, do you think, to just act and just destroy this defiler? But see, God's working. Amen. Amen. God's got Amen. something in need. The Holy Spirit wants our mind to think about this. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How did this happen? How did it happen that I made you perfect? And you've defiled yourself. Sin has entered in. There was no such thing as sin. <laughs> there wasn't anything... There wasn't anything that we know of that ever disagreed with God until Lucifer. Although God is the ultimate ruler over all things, all the worlds, all the nations, all the peoples of the world, God reigns over them, whether they know it or not. God can work his will in the midst of the earth and Nebuchadnezzar think he did it, right? That's not what we're thinking about. He, he lifted up as he said, look, he said, look at what, look at Babylon that I've created for my majesty. Didn't last long, did it? Daniel had warned him now, a year earlier, Daniel had warned him. This is, remember he had that vision, he called for him, a dream, and he said, it, 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 kind of interesting, he tells him, he says, in, in effect, he says, your enemies are going to love this. I mean, you're, you're the tree, Nebuchadnezzar. They're going to love this. They're, you're going to be cut down and your enemies are going to prosper. Look at this. But, was that the end? No, he said, after seven years, seven times, he's going to restore the kingdom. How odd this must have sounded to those around Daniel. I mean, can you imagine? The president... Loses his mind and goes out and eats grass, and seven years later we let him be president again. <laughs> See, this is totally outside the realm of normal. Mm -hmm. God's showing us something. Amen. 
Not only can God cut down, God can redeem. God can do it. Amen. Only God can do that. Amen. So, although God is the ruler, it doesn't always look like it. Now, if you're one of the elect angels, and you're looking on, and you're seeing Lucifer's fallen now, and yet he's drawing a third of the angels into his camp, right? Isn't that what it says? Amen. With his tail, right? Lest anyone impute sin, God with sin, implying that God has some way created evil in any sense. We have this pungent word from God spoken to us through Ezekiel as to the nature of Lucifer. How? When we're talking about Lucifer, what is the nature of Lucifer? What is his real nature? Because it's important because God created Lucifer. So if we're going to have um, good thoughts about it, we need to know what God did and then what Lucifer did. And I'm doing this because from heaven, the heavens do rule. And someone's going to talk about that. But see, how, why, why would Belshazzar take the golden cups and drink wine out of them? What would possess him to do that? Well, I, I'm looking at it from the top down. This is why he did this. Because we have an enemy. All right, now, now, the Holy Spirit wants us to understand this. Jude tells us that, um, that as soon as they sinned, the, the angels sinned, that God immediately put them under chains of darkness. In other words, they can't change. All right, they're, they're fixed. Their destiny's, their destiny's fixed. Their nature, their fallen nature's fixed. Amen. They can't learn. They can't advance. They can never. They can. They can always learn and never be able to come to the knowledge of the truth. That's the angel. They're fixed. All right. Why did God do that? Well, this is the purview of God, is it not? Do I don't even read anywhere where God tells me why He did that, which means I don't need to know why. I need to believe it is. This Amen. is what happens. Amen. We can see that God's vindicated when you see who Lucifer is, who God is, what God did, and, and see, God's vindicated. In the end, ultimately, God's going to be vindicated by all the words of men, from, from all the words of All the judgments that men have made against God Amen. are going to be vindicated in the end. Amen. Amen. Now, I want to read this. I want to read this about Ezekiel here. About <coughs> Ezekiel. Because it, it this vindicates God as far as the nature of Lucifer when he was created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. See, well, he had a position in heaven, right? God made him. He gave him a position in heaven. So this is right along the lines with what, what, what we're talking about. Nebuchadnezzar was created by God, and God did give him a, a reign. He gave him to be a, a great king. And as far as kings go, I have set thee so, thou hast upon the holy mountain of God, and thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire, thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. God not only created Lucifer perfect, but we can see from this that, that his, his works were perfect. That's what it says. Thou was perfect in thy ways. He did perfect. See, we don't, we're not given to see the whole story, but we know one thing. God did it right. He Amen. made it perfect. Amen. Perfect. Amen. perfect. Amen. There was, in other words, this is why it was such a wonder in heaven. How could this happen? He was made perfect. How do you get evil from perfect? Well, see, Lucifer, he had a different idea, didn't he? See, I'm saying this because this is what happened to Nebuchadnezzar. He had a different idea. Daniel came to him. He told him, you better be careful now. You better not. You better not be filled with pride. You better. You. Remember he said, he told him, be kind to the poor. Maybe God will increase your tranquility. Maybe, perhaps God will. And I noticed he didn't say it, that it wouldn't happen. Because Daniel knew God gave the dream. He gave it for a reason. This is going to happen. He said, 
Perhaps you, and I have of the persuasion that God gave him a year because Daniel asked him to. But anyway, the point is, is that we've got trouble up here. We've got trouble in heaven. Remember one, one place it says that there was war in heaven. All right, so I'm highlighting this because, see, Christ's mission was not just to save man, but it was to purify. Amen. 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 This place where Amen. sin had erupted. Amen. One man. Oh, speaking as a man. One angel. One angel. Just one. Had a different will. Had a different idea. And we know there's one place in Revelation, I think I got it in here, that talks about a little horn. And this little horn reached all the way up in there. See, people may have just little ideas. It may just be a little idea. You, you, you won't really die. God knows that if you, you eat of this fruit, you'll, you'll be like him. God's holding out on you. He's holding out. He's a little horn. Just talking little soft words. You don't have to go to church every Sunday. You don't have to. God loves you so much. These things are defiling. Mm -hmm. The anything, anything that comes in that tries to move you away from God, mm -hmm. this is defiling. Amen. Satan is the defiler. Amen. And he's so good at it and so potent at it that he turned a third of the angels to turn their back on God who they stood in his presence. They stood and ministered to him. Lucifer was so, he was so good at what he did, he turned their minds away from God. Now you turn to the earth, you think he has any trouble at all gaining access to a natural man. He is going to win every single time. There isn't one person that's ever been born of Adam that hasn't sinned. Not one. God had to send one that was born of the Holy Spirit Amen. to overcome it. Amen. Amen. Satan, you don't want to mess around with this. Amen. This one, this one, has been given to rule. Amen. Now you know God's ultimately the ruler. We know this by revelation. We know it. We're not guessing about this. He sits on the circle of the earth. Mm -hmm. Everything is done for him. Mm -hmm. Everything Amen. is done for him. This Lucifer, he said, he's called the God of this world. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, we don't want to go against Satan toe to toe. Yeah. That isn't how we overcome him. We overcome him indirectly. Amen. Amen. I'll tell you, I guarantee you, 100% of the time, if you'll walk in the spirit, Amen. you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. Amen. This is our only hope, Amen. and I know you know it. Amen. I know you know it. He doesn't have any power. He doesn't have any power at all against no. Satan yeah, is absolutely amen. ineffective. If a person resists him, well, he, he, he might leave, right? No. <laughs> if you resist him, he will flee. Amen. Why? Because Jesus destroyed the devil. Amen. That's why Amen. when he hung on the cross, he destroyed him that had the power of death. Amen. All right, now we're talking about tonight about a time when he hadn't been destroyed. Not yet. It was only he was destroyed in purpose, but not, not, not yet. Jesus had not taken away sin. So see, when we look back at these accounts and these men, that were moved. <laughs> they, they, they weren't any stronger physically than we were. Even if he had majesty and glory, he still was a man. And he was subject to things that men, see, men are weak. Fallen men are weaker. Yeah. But see, when, it, when it's up against the prince of the darkness, whew, you, you see, you know what I'm saying. These two, these, these uh, Two events, I was thinking about 
this event that we read about in, um, in uh, Daniel 5, and the other event that we read about in Romans 9. Now, see, uh, talking about a king now, talking about the fact that he had majesty, he could do what he wanted. I see, Christ, now, he, he has a kingdom, right? And in Romans 9, it talks about he, things that he can do. Amen. Things that he can do. Amen. Amen. How do we effectively resist Satan? Well, I was thinking about this, you know. Daniel, <clears throat> Daniel didn't have this that we have in Christ Jesus. Daniel couldn't tell Nebuchadnezzar, if you'll just walk in the Spirit. Now, Nebuchadnezzar, yeah, I'll tell you right now, if you just trust God, see, he does not what he told me. Because there wasn't time. And I, I'm, this contrast keeps sticking out to me that we, we've come into another time. See, we're of another age. Sin, for, sin has been put away Amen. by the sacrifice of Christ. Now, now we, we're reigning, actually, if you think about it, we're much more powerful than Nebuchadnezzar. Amen. Amen. Nebuchadnezzar had a hard time saying no to sin. Just look, just look at his life. But see, he didn't have what we have in Christ Jesus. Amen. He didn't have it, we, but we do. So see, now when, when we reread chapters like Romans 9, what do we say, amen. Amen. We say, amen. That, amen. That's, that sounds good. Amen. That sounds good. God, God's making some choices, and we say, amen. That's amen. good. Amen. That's good. I, I don't understand all of them, and... And, but I will when I get there. I'll, I'll understand it. But see, now I don't. I say, amen. Yes. Who, whosoever will. That, that isn't our message. Whosoever will. You want to come to Christ? We want you to come to Christ. Amen. We want to preach the gospel to you. Do you have a heart that's soft that will respond in faith? And we say, whosoever will. Amen. Amen. See, I was thinking, you know, if God could... Rain, you know, because God didn't lose control of heaven. No. I mean, Lucifer won. It was one. He started the whole thing, and then we read in Genesis where he brought it down to the earth. It was the same sin. It wasn't anything different. Satan doesn't try to work in you any different than he tried to work in Nebuchadnezzar. Not any different than he, than he tried to temp away the temp, uh, uh, draw away the angels. Same thing. He's always going to get you to think something. There's some profit in not doing what God said. But it's not going to happen. Now, another, another thought, and I, I'm sorry if this seems scattered. It doesn't seem scattered to me, but <laughs> Daniel, you know, God could have instantly destroyed Lucifer. I think we all know that. I think, you know, the, the moment that Lucifer had the thought in his mind, God could have just snuffed him out. Or even, I was thinking even even more, God could have just not created Lucifer. I mean, this is God we're talking about. Amen. You know, I mean, he knows all things, and, and he knows all his works for the foundation of the world. So, to, But see, what would he be had? How would God work his eternal purpose? You know, it's, it's like if God could just make me believe independent from my will and my desire, and my, and my then what would he have? He'd have a robot. So see, God doesn't work like this. You can oversimplify salvation, and you can overgeneralize it. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 It's true that God could have instantly destroyed Lucifer because, because he's God. But, but look at what's come out of this. How would you try the saints? How would you be able to, in the ages to come, give them power and glory and make them one with your son? you got to know. You say, well, God knows everything. Well, see, but God experientially knows. Your, if you make it to glory, I'll tell you right now, you've been tempted, you've been tried, you've been tested, and you've been pro pro proved faithful, right? Amen. He's not going to say, well done, good and faithful servant, to those who haven't done well and been good servants, right? Amen. Satan, really, he, now, I'm not feeling sorry for the devil. Please don't misunderstand me. <laughs> But Satan doesn't really know what's going on. No. He doesn't. He's under chains of darkness. He, he knows one thing. He hates God, and he wants to get at him any way he can. 
And so he's, he's filled with wrath, right? He knows his time is short. He's filled with wrath. And he's trying anything and everything. Now, I will give him credit for this. He can look at you and he can examine you. And he can find out, what does this person really want? What is their heart really set on? And that's what he's going to offer you, right? He's going to say, hey, come on. Whatever it is. Am I going like real over on If God can rule over fallen angels, I mean, he did it in glory, right? He ruled over them. If, if you think it's hard for him to rule over the dust of the earth? I mean, this is like, this is nothing for God. God's God. And yet look at what, how, what he's done with dust. He's created us in his image and after his likeness. Now, I don't know if Lucifer was, was like upset with that or maybe he wanted to be. I don't know. But I know one thing. He doesn't like us. He doesn't. He's after us constantly. Why? Because he doesn't. He's, he, he, we're made in the image of God. That's why. We're made in God's image and we remind him of something all the time that he doesn't want. So if he, can, if he can get us, even one man, to fall, he'll do it. Now, um, I guess I'm going to close pretty soon. God gave Nebuchadnezzar a kingdom. And he gave him majesty and glory and honor. And God's showing us that these attributes that he had are actually... <coughs> They, they pictured this one that was going to come. This one that was going to be our advocate. This one that was going to have power. Do you need power? You, in any given situation, he's got the power. So you go to him and he'll give it to you. You, you, um, you see, if you can see him for who he is, believe me, you'll do what he asks. See, he has, he's, he's majestic. If you can see him, just see Jesus for who he is, you'll do what he asks. Now in Daniel 5, we, we read... Whom he would slay, whoever he wanted to. In Romans 9, we read, therefore, he had mercy on whom he'll have mercy. See, this is the kind of power that Jesus has, the kind of power that God has. Whom he would keep alive, we read in Daniel 5. He kept some alive just because he wanted to. Mm -hmm. Romans 9, it says, whom he will harden, he hardens. Amen. I mean, we just got to believe that. Amen. Amen. It's the right thing to do. Wrote in Daniel 5, we read, whom he would set up. He could exalt people, put him at his right hand. <clears throat> Romans 9, we read, hath not the potter power over the clay to make of the same lump one vessel unto honor? Mm -hmm. We just got to believe that. Amen. We Amen. believe it. Why do we believe? Because God's good. Amen. He can't make a mistake. Amen. So we trust God. I don't know. I don't know who to exalt, but you do. We read in Daniel 5, who we would put down. Mm -hmm. See, I've, been, I've had times in my life when I felt like God said, no, you sit down there for a while. Mm -hmm. Why? Because God knew what was best, that's why. Amen. He, he, God knows. You got pride. You don't, some, you don't think about pride that you probably don't know you got. But God knows. Mm -hmm. And he can give you a lower seat for a while and say, sit down there for a while, son. If you can hear him say, son, it'll make sense. You hear him say, God knows what's the best thing to do. I don't. Romans 9, it says, Hath not the power, power of the clay to make of the same lump one vessel unto dishonor. And he can do it. And he does it. Because he's God. He knows what's best. And all of these texts, specifically, as we compare both of these texts together, this question keeps coming up among men. Is there unrighteousness with God? Is it possible that in the end, that even one instance throughout all the history of mankind, that we would be able to see that God acted inappropriately? And see, we all know the answer. Amen. God forbid. Amen. God can't lie. Amen. He can only do righteousness. Amen. So see, it makes perfect sense. Uh, all these cares, cast them on the Lord. Amen. Cast them, give them to Him. Amen. And just admit, you know, I'm not God. 
Right. Now see, this was this would have been Lucifer's salvation. If he had just come to himself and said, wait a minute, how can I possibly exalt my throne? Which, in order for him to say that, he had some kind of a throne. But he, the, the, exalt my throne above the one who created me? <laughs> it's foolish. It's foolishness. And yet men do it all the time. They do it all the time. Whatever it is, their want exceeds God's desire. There's something wrong with that. Anyway, God, in the end, see, God does have a kingdom for us. And it's better than we could ever imagine. Christ, Amen. you stay faithful Amen. to Christ, walk in the Spirit, and someday you'll be imported into this everlasting kingdom. And whatever place that you have, it'll fit perfectly with your character, with who you are, with what you want. God's good. And God's getting us ready for a good habitation. Amen. So it's, it's worth whatever, whatever struggle you have to Amen. go through. Amen. It's worth what God has for you in Christ Jesus. Amen. And I'm a, I rejoice in Christ Jesus Amen. and have no confidence in the flesh. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother.